What is going on everybody and welcome back into another awesome video from Byerly Studios. As you can see here, these are the highlight clips from video number 6 in this Mad Mike Studios 68 Robot Men commission build. We have come so far in sculpting and paintwork to reach this portion of the build. And this is video number 11 in this series. Now if you haven't had the opportunity to see any of those previous videos, go ahead, jump ship right now, go over to my YouTube channel and check them out. It is a ton of data, a ton of content for you to binge watch and enjoy, and definitely rely on your timestamps in the bottom of each and every video, and that will include this video as well. This video runs about an hour and five minutes long, so if you want to jump around, make sure you check the bookmarks below so you can jump between different sections. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy as we run into this project. Alright, so let's jump right into this content guys and begin this portion of this project. Now the, the helmet on the right hand side there is the one we're trying to mirror as far as color code, decals, wire work, antennas on the top of the helmet, all sorts of fun stuff. So sit back, we're going to start off and we're going to start by painting the antenna on top of the helmet. So here we are, we sculpted this in video number 6, right? So we're going to go ahead and begin with a Mars black base. You know I love my Mars black guys. I love my, my dark bases. This is what we're trying to create on the right hand side. An overall casted aluminum texture for the most part. And I want to make sure that it starts off with a dark base. And we're going to slowly incorporate titanium white to build up those tones for dry brushing. And then eventually I'll hit it with a little bit of a pure silver highlight over all of those raised edges. Very simple, very to the point on this antenna. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and sit that off to the side. We also have these silver uh, knobs that are going to go on the sides of his helmet. Uh, I'll give you some reference photos of that in a minute, but with the magic of editing, we're going to go ahead and coat those in Mark Black. Oh, there it is. How awesome is that? The magic of editing. So with those sitting off to the side and curing, we're going to begin the interior of the helmet. Now the interior of the helmet is just going to be kind of plain Jane, but I do want it to have some depth to it. So we're going to start off with my handy dandy Mars Black base, and we're going to go ahead and get that completely covered out in a good thick layer of Mars Black. Now we're not going to forget to paint the eye port for his eyes. We want to make sure that that has the same color as the overall uh, housing of the helmet. Then we're also going to use that same Mars Black while I have it out and we're going to base coat the, bra uh, the, the bracket or the frame of his, uh, his windowed eye segment there. So this is just going to start off with a Mars Black base and then as we continue with this process it will eventually get a, a uh, gunmetal gray uh, coat. So as you can see here, we're just kind of getting the color codes kind of right, and we're going to start running into the helmet itself in just a moment. So it has a nice dark green color, uh, and it also has a black frame for the eye, uh, the eyeglass. But originally, I had not been referencing the actual helmet itself. I was going off memory. Shame on me. I know, right? I wasn't looking at my reference photos. And I started off with a nice deep hooker green. This is Windsor and Newton hooker green, pure paint. Uh, it, of course, it is an acrylic. Uh, and you can see it darkened out quite a bit over that black base. I really liked how that looked. And at this point, I was just like, yeah, this is a great color. I'm going to run with it. Mm. How wrong was I? Mr. Byerly, you were wrong. So I went ahead and coated the outside of the helmet in the same Mars black base. And then as we let that dry in different segments and different sessions, I went ahead and did the same thing. I coated the entire outside of the helmet in the hooker grain. 
So sit back and enjoy the time lapse. I am using a heat gun a little bit here so I can kind of expedite some of the dry time. But you can kind of see that it's just fun to see the overall solid paint colors kind of uh, time lapse over the, the background colors. It's just something fun and I don't know about you but I just enjoy watching that. So we're just going to go ahead and continue with that process and then here in just a second i thought this was kind of funny as I, I laid it down uh and, and then not, not realizing it it kind of just rolled back and away from me so it's like whoop, and it's gone <laughs> i thought that was kind of funny so as you can see here we are going to coat these uh small silver knobs in a uh, just a nice sterling silver and because I did put a uh, Mars Black base on those, just give a good coverage. I will have to do multiple layers on that before I go on to any other colors. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the sterling silver, multiple layers, then come in with some gunmetal gray. And then eventually I'll come in with some dirty washes just to give it some character, make it blend in with the actual helmet itself. We'll go ahead and post a picture of those knobs in the top right hand corner in 3, 2, 1. There they are. So as we continue to build out that uh, base silver on those knobs here, uh, we'll also shift over to the actual frame for the uh, the insert glass that we're going to make. Now this is a, a gunmetal gray and it's got a lot more sheen to it than the uh, Mars Black does. I'm going to go ahead and put some Mars Black beside it so you can kind of see the difference in the uh, in the the how glossy it looks. Now it does catch the light in just different ways, so I did make sure that I left some brush marks before. Uh, on the outside of that frame just for some character some some different uh, uh, you know textures and things like that so this is I think second or third layer on the silver knobs and this process will continue and continue until I get full coverage to my satisfaction all right so at this point is really when I realized that my green is the wrong color when I went in to look at the reference photos that I had for his helmet I realized that the paint was just completely too dark so I came in and I started off mixing small amounts of pale olive with a mixture of browns and although I did use browns initially in this color uh, palette here I decided just to neutralize the browns altogether so as I worked my way down the helmet here with this lighter uh, pale olive uh, it, it will have less and less brown in it just because I felt like it wasn't necessarily needed so it is just pure pale pale olive and it looks phenomenal 
And I really do feel like I'm able to achieve a better overall color combination with the pale olive. It's going to show a lot of the, the brown and dirty washes that I use later on in the process. Uh, and it's just going to give it a more character, I think. It's going to more so look like the color of his helmet itself. It's not the exact color code, but it's pretty daggum close. And I'm very happy with how it looks. I do leave the inside of the helmet a darker green. And that just gives it more shadow. Because there's not so much detail on it as there is on the outside. But at least that creates an excessive shadow on the interior of the helmet. Uh, and across his face when the helmet is down. On the right hand side you can kind of see the color that I'm going for and as I add those browns later it kind of brings that color uh, into, into being. So the pale olive really did brighten it quite a bit, but I decided to take it one step further and I wanted to put one more layer of paint. And this time I actually mixed a little bit of uh, hooker green with the pale olive and it did uh, bring that up a little bit. I like the greenish tone that I'm getting here. Uh, I do feel like that the pale olive would have been a gorgeous color by itself with the brown washes on there. But I think that this mixture of the two, brown, uh, hooker green and pale olive are going to be absolutely spectacular and this is the final base color that i decided on Alright, so with that color pretty much done, I go ahead and set it off to the side so it can kind of cure overnight. Again, like I said, this is a multi-day type of thing, and it did take quite a bit of, of layers and dry times and painting, dry time, and decals, dry time to get everything done. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out these silver knobs here. <clears throat> I did put one more layer of, of just sterling silver on them before they move on to gunmetal gray, just for some of the shadows. Alright, so now's the fun part. This is where I'm going to start to pour the UV resin glass insert. So originally I was going to go and I was going to make this a brilliant bright blue. And you'll see here in a moment, it doesn't really work out the way that I had intended. So I start off with just a simple me uh, medicine cup here. And I'm just going to pour quite a bit of UV resin into the bottom of it. Just enough to fill in this little square that I have here. And I don't want to fill it up all the way, but just, just pretty much, pretty full. You know, is there, if there's a little bit of a difference in layers, 
between the glass and that ex uh, outside frame. I'm completely cool with that. All right, so it's looking good so far. Uh, go ahead and switch that around. Let some of those bubbles rise to the surface so they can pop. So I just let it sit there for a second or two, and then I'm gonna go ahead and choose out my ink. Now, originally, like I said, I was wanting it to be not just a brilliant blue, but kind of a, a dark navy, nice, a night, nice dark blue. So I went with a Tim Holtz Monsoon Alcohol Ink. Now, as you can see there, that ink is also helping some of those bubbles rise to the surface and pop. And I'll add one drop at a time until I can get just the, the clarity and the blue that I want. It doesn't take much to, to really color the UV resin or epoxies. So just add a little bit at a time until you get the color that you want. Now, one thing about Monsoon, and you're about to start to begin to see it here in a moment, is Monsoon has a little bit of what I see as brown pigment. So as you let that UV resin sit, some of that brown pigment will rise to the surface and it will leave the blue on the bottom. So I set it off to the side to let it sit for a few minutes while I got things situated. And when I bring it back over to final stir it, you'll see that brown. So I'm just going to use the pressure of two uh, large uh, paint containers. This is my Mars black and my titanium white containers just to apply downward pressure on both sides of the rectangular frame. And I have that sitting on just a plain old plastic baggie. And it's just gonna apply pressure so that I can get the UV resin in there before it cures. You can see that brown right there, guys, see it? Yeah, so I really didn't have an intention for that, but I was thinking to myself while I was mixing this, even though it wasn't the desired color that I wanted, I thought to myself, wow, well maybe, maybe, welding helmets really don't necessarily have a blue insert a lot of them have the blue reflection so when people are welding you see the the, the, the light reflecting off of the lens as it reflects the the light so and the glare so what i'm thinking is that although it may go in blue like it is now a lot of that brown will come to the surface and it will give it more of a realistic looking glass so I'm hoping that it actually does have a little bit of a darker to brown tinge. But if I put an LED behind it, uh, this maybe blue, you'll see all of the blue shining through. I'm able to achieve this without the light. So later on in the process from the halo light above my workstation, looking down through the helmet, you can see that his hair on the topper glows blue because the lens is blue but it looks like a dark rich brown black brown color from the outside without any light going through it i'm really th th it's kind of a, a like a happy mistake of how it all turned out it's really not in what i intended the process to be like but i'm really happy with how it turned out so um happy mistakes right just pouring a little bit of time in there until i can just get the, the overall depth that i want and then I'll start to hit that with a UV light. Now, it's not going to seep too much out of the bottom. Um, if this was two-part epoxy overnight, I would lose all of this from under the frame and it would, it would be all over the place. But because it's UV resin, I'm going to hit it with a UV light right here in a moment. And it's going to cure all of that so there's nothing to seep out and underneath the frame. And if a little bit seeps out from underneath it, then that's cool. It just adds strength to the back port of that frame. Hitting it with that UV light right there, and then I'll test it with a popsicle stick to see when it's cured. Alright, so here is the final form. Uh, as of right now, this is what it looks like. A few bubbles here and there, but I'm not really too upset by that. I think it just adds a little bit of character to it. Uh, and then on the back, as you can see there, it is stuck to the plastic, so we're going to go ahead and peel that off. kind of shining a light through it. Look how brilliantly blue that is. It looks like a real welding lens. I'm really cool with it. I'm happy with how it turned out and it's beyond my expectation. Um, so I lied here. I said I was gonna remove that, so I decided not to. Instead, I decided to go ahead and use the plastic baggie, flip it over, and I hit it a few more times with the UV light, and then we go ahead and remove this. Look at how good that glassy surface looks. And as you can see, I stated a moment ago, some of it did seep out from underneath it. So it kind of like kind of purged out of the edges of the frame. That's okay. I'm not worried about it. The X-Acto knife can fix that. 
and it applied a really nice glassy look to the back of the door so I'm really cool with it here it is again with the light shining from behind you can see quite a few bubbles there but I'm not really worried about that if I wanted to pressure pot those out next time I could but I'm really happy with how it looks I do like how when you take away the light it darkens out quite a bit and that's kind of the overall look I was going with after I saw that brown. Here I am kind of just dry fitting it just to kind of get an idea of how it looks. It is far from done but this is pretty cool. I'm liking how it's going to look so far and I look forward to moving forward with the project. So here I am just kind of putting the bolts in, seeing how it looks. Here's what it looks like from the front with the light. You can see the browns on the surface. And then when you shine it from the back, you see the brilliant bright blue. I like that. So at this point is when I really realized that I wanted to put a light maybe temporarily behind the helmet. So if he wanted to lay the light up there so he could see it, he could. If he wanted to leave that off, then he could do so. If it's, it's his prerogative if he wants to have that light behind it or not. Uh, but we're definitely going to later on in the process add blue flames to a torch for him as an accessory. So that's pretty cool. All right, so at this point, it's time to just go ahead and drill these holes for these kind of antenna that he has coming off the top of his helmet. Yes, I know these are the wrong size. Shame on me. I went over to Home Depot and I bought these two uh, bolts. They just have threads on the bottom, like half inch to an inch. And I went ahead and bored these uh, holes out with the drill to about uh, a quarter inch. And that allows me to go ahead and slide those in and just test fit to see how they look. A few days later, I went ahead and got the correct size, which was three inch instead of four inch, and then it makes it look a whole lot better. So just be aware that uh, up to this point, I still have the wrong bolts. We'll get those later. Drilling the second hole there. Try to clean that hole up a little bit so it's not so messy. Just because I have a little bit more painting to do and I don't want that hole to be excessively dirty or nasty and and uh, prone to cracking and removing that paint around the hole. So the, the, the nuts are just going to kind of just slide on there on the bottom of the helmet there. I'm not too worried about covering those up because when I UV resin they'll kind of be locked into place. It's looking pretty good. So after I test fit that I go ahead and use some uh, acrylic um, hooker green paint same color we used before on the interior of the helmet and I just go ahead and touch up those so that way that that bright white clay is not shining through where I had to break it away after drilling just kind of touching it up all right so at this point this had cured overnight so it's pretty stout pretty ready and I go ahead and just use a nasty brown mixture I had mixed this I've used it for a lot of projects it's my favorite brown mixture I didn't want to use any um, Mars Black mixture just because I didn't want it to darken out too much. But I just want to add a little bit of character on the interior of the helmet without having to work hard to do so. So I'm spraying it a little bit at a time, letting it drip, letting it drop. And I'm going to go ahead and hit that with a heat gun so it kind of expedites those drips to dry in position. I'm going to do the same thing with the exterior of the front of the helmet. And you're going to see it start to transform a little bit as far as the color. So sit back and enjoy. Again, this mixture is rubbing alcohol, a lot of water, a little bit of burnt umber, raw sienna, uh, and any other things that I put on for any other particular project. It evolves and I add to it every time I do a new project.
So as you can see here, it does take quite a bit of work to get the overall dirty depth that I wanted. And it really does change the way that that hooker green and pale olive acrylic mixture do work. Again, those are Windsor & Newton paints. They're beautiful paints and I love to use those. Some of my very favorite colors. As you can see here, I did move to my, uh, my handy dandy brush there. Very watered down mixture of uh, burnt umber there. Uh, a little bit of raw sienna, but mostly burnt umber, and I'm just letting that drip and drop where I feel like it needs a little extra color, adding drips along those rusted um, uh, wing support there. So I'm just really happy with how it turns out. Now this is a separate session, so it's completely dried overnight. As you can see, the video quality is a little bit brighter there. And I went ahead and just screwed that antenna anode, cathode anode, onto top of the tumbler here. So it's kind of where it's going to be. Now I am going to apply some uh, some washers to that as well later just to give it a more realistic look. But right now I'm just going in and I'm adding just a little bit of silver uh, so I can apply some rust to these uh, welded joints. Now his helmet does not necessarily have these. He has a pretty clean connection between the window eye port and the actual housing. I decided to go ahead and grunge mine out a bit. You know guys, I love my grunge, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and silver out a little bit here and there. I'll also do a dry rub of silver along the exterior of the actual helmet plate itself. And then we'll come in with some dirt, more dirty, dirty layers to kind of wash those out and just make them feel more blended with the cup. I keep saying cup, it's more of a, a helmet at this point. Alright, so what do you think so far guys? I think it's looking pretty good. I like that it grunge now, I like it brown, and I like that it actually darkened that green behind quite a bit. So here we are with the silver uh, knobs at this point. I almost got them ready to be attached to the side of the helmet. And I'm just kind of getting an idea of how I like the color is, as opposed to the actual, actual helmet plate itself. I did feel like it needed a little bit of extra, so I went ahead and darkened out the underneath of it with a Mars Black uh, paint mixture. Uh, that is basic paints. I didn't use any Windsor or Newton on that, but it's just basic. And then I went ahead and applied a little bit of gunmetal gray to the shadow recesses of those knobs, just to give them a little bit of highlight, make them a little bit brighter. And then I did come in with a little bit of pure silver, not sterling silver, pure silver, uh, for those raised, raised knob um, texture knob pieces, what do you call them? I don't know, ridges. And uh, that just gives them a little bit of a highlight. Other, overall, these are just kind of simple, come to something small, but if we were if we were missing these, then he would notice, I would notice, and I would just feel bad because they didn't have them on there, you know? So we're gonna go ahead and add these on. I'm gonna spray them with the same dirty rub mixture of alcohol, ink, um, uh, acrylic paints, and uh, Mars black and browns, and just a bunch of nasty colors. Kind of making sure that those drips kind of sling off there. And then here's the helmet as of right now. I went ahead and put those antenna back on. Again, they are too big, so we're going to bring it down to about three inches, which will be right there where my finger is at. We'll get to that later. That's not a problem. Uh, but this is just where we're sitting at this point in time. This was a very long process. If you add in the sculpting time, this was a very, very long time to, to create it up to this point. I would say at least a good four or five hours minimum of constant work. But of course, this took days. So right now, it's looking pretty good. Of course, we kind of build the welded um, mesh over his mouth, some decals, and we still got quite a bit of, of distance to go. So right now, I'm trying to get an idea of how big that welded mouth mesh needs to be. I'm going to post a picture of that in the top right hand corner in three, two, one. Uh, I got you. It's on the left hand side. So you can see it has like a mesh mouthpiece there. I don't think that's functional. It's also JV welded into place. So we're going to kind of switch it up and I'm going to try to achieve that in some way. So what I got to first decide on is there's not enough room on my design because it's not aspect ratio perfect. So there's not enough room for all of those decals plus the mesh itself. 
Um, I went through some design things. And I decided I wanted to use this old uh, pencil can, pencil, pen. It's just a wire mesh basket. And what I want to do is I want to just go ahead and recycle it because I don't plan to keep it. I'm not using it in the studio. And I want to just go ahead and recycle this and bend my own mesh mouthpiece. So this is a little bit of a process. I use some uh, some side cutters here. I cut out a segment and then I start to bend it into shape before I UV resin it into position. So enjoy the show. So I went ahead and just uh, kind of marked off where it's going to be. I wanted to darken that so that it just has a simulation of, of depth there, even though I haven't really cut into the clay or anything like that. And that's just going to give it a little bit of depth when I go over it with just some, just some silver or some metal um, thick paint to make it look like it's been JV welded into place. So I'm just kind of getting the overall shape that I like. And then I go ahead and UV resin the sides uh, in the interior. And I'm just hoping that it grabs a hold and holds it where it needs to stay, at least for now, and so I can UV resin the entire helmet. So there was a little bit of gap on both corners. I'm not really too happy with that, so I decided to use a very, very thick mixture of, of silver. This is pure silver, and I'm just letting my brush scrape across the wire and just take the paint down to the the, uh, the the metal plating helmet itself. So I'm just being very messy with this. You can see I'm trying to stretch the paint so it kind of stays in those positions. And I'm just letting it gloop on it in a very thick manner. And it kind of gives a simulation that it was also JV welded into place, but I don't have it as dark as that gray JV weld is. But it's still very cool. I'm still happy with how it looks. And I, I feel like it would have been missing or lacking if I had been, uh, if I had not had put these on. So I'm really happy with how this looks. So that's where the silver knobs come into play. I went ahead and kind of uh, E6000 those into place. They will get permanently put on when I UV resin the entire housing as a whole. So the E6000 is just to get by, get it on there, and then I'll go ahead and apply the UV resin to lock it into place later. So now I'm just trying to get an idea of how I need to shape those those hazard tapes on the sides of the helmet. Although my, my shape is slightly different than his. It's a little bit shorter than his real helmet is uh, and as far as aspect ratio. I still want to include as many of these decals as I can. I know that I'll be missing one around the mouth and chin area. That's just that little triangle with the exclamation point. That's okay. I'm not missing it. But then I'm going to go ahead and get these put into place. I was going to cut these out on the Cricut, but I decided to change it up. And I decided to cut these out by hand. I thought it would just give a nice little character. It also challenged me to create these in a way that I usually don't, don't do it. I usually rely on machines to do everything. I thought it was kind of cool to make it just 
bare bones and do it myself. Pretty cool. So all these are just yellow and black vinyl. I'm going to cut them to shape. Uh, and then I will put them both on. And then later on in the process, we will use a brown wash to dirty them out before we epoxy. So at this point, I went ahead and applied the second knob to the other side, uh, and then we're going to start working on the decals above the mesh wire on the front mouth. That includes a yellow band and then a red and white striped band. Post a picture of that in the top right hand corner. Three, two, one. There it is. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. By cutting out by hand, I just think it added a little bit more roughness and uh, it's not as clean cut as the Cricut would have made it if I had designed it in uh, Procreate or drew them and then printed them off uh, and had the machine cut it for me, but I think that it just adds more character this way. So it took more time obviously, but it was, it was easier than loading vinyl into a Cricut and cutting them all. So we're going to move back to the door now and now instead of doing a decal across this and having it super duper thin and because it is a piece of clay that I hand sculpted it's not perfectly uniform in every way and I just don't want it to have just a bunch of flaws because I'm putting a straight piece of vinyl on a clay sculpted surface and it's got a little bit of UV resin there so then none of that's perfectly flat and i'm okay with that i'm cool with how all that turned out but i wanted to go ahead and apply the yellow and the black banding to the the frame there i'll post a picture of that in the top right hand corner three two one there it is and i want to include that so that i can just give it some color around those that eye port uh, and it just gives it more of a rough a, a rustic look it looks more like what he created and it just just brings the realism to what he made a little bit closer to perfection. So at this point I'm at the stage where I'm trying to decide how I want to do the, the decal or or the sticker on the top part. He has two stickers there. He has one that says danger and then one uh, that is a um, kind of a hazard symbol. symbol. Uh, I had the, some of these other ones printed off, radioactive, danger, high voltage. The danger one's pretty close, but his is a square, that one's a circle, and I don't want to half do it, so uh, I'm not happy with any of these. So although I have these printed and they're convenient, I'm going to go ahead and print my own. Um, I did have to wait some, for some paper to come in to do that, but I think it'll be well worth the wait to have that done the right way. So at least for now, we'll go ahead and sit these off to the side, and I'll come back around to this uh, maybe later on in the build. So at this point, I want to go ahead and start doing my copper wire work. Uh, so he has this ante these antennas on top of his helmet, and they all have wire work in different uh, gauges. Uh, and I wanted to try to achieve this as, as closely to, to as possible as he has them. So I actually bought some copper wire from, from just Home Depot. It comes on just a nice simple spool that you can spool out. And I'm just using a long um, uh, meat skewer 
to wrap the the coiled uh, uh, copper around it and create those tight coils uh, and I actually wrapped it so tight that I had trouble getting them off of the the wood and I had to have, actually use a um, a bolt or a, a nut to pressure and push those down and then I can kind of expand those out to the right uh, spacing that they need to be to wrap around uh, the antenna on top. So the antenna that we're working with is the very center one and we're trying to create those those horizontal coils around each individual divot. Uh, a picture of that in the top right hand corner, three, two, one. There it is. And wrapping these around each individual kind of divot there means that I would have at least, I think, four or five of them. And they were a little bit more challenging than I thought. I was wanting to make them all one continuous piece, but it would just prove too difficult. So I ended up just kind of wrapping them around. And then I just kind of clipped them onto each other, just like you would like at the ends of a bracelet or something. And just the coil, the fact that they're coils keeps them in place. Uh, I do add a little bit of UV resin between these later on in the process just to kind of just lock them into place. Uh, I didn't go super crazy with the UV resin on, on this antenna just because I didn't want it to be super thick and nasty looking. Uh, he also applies a little bit of yellow UV resin glow to these. I don't know if those are actual glow lights or if they're just they just have resin on them. I'm assuming they actually glow. I'm not going to create a glowing uh, 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 lights on the actual antennas themselves. It would have been a cool feature, um, but uh, we, we don't have enough time for all that. But uh, it still turned out absolutely incredible with the, what I was able to achieve here, and I'm really happy with it. The only thing that I'm upset with with this is I couldn't find any copper or, or tin wiring that was one stiff enough uh, and two dark enough. So although the copper wire here is stiff enough to stay in position without it, I can be really rough with it. I don't have to worry about it moving, but it's not dark enough. So uh, I didn't want to stain it off camera and then have to worry about rubbing the stain off on my hands. Um, I do kind of uh, apply a little bit of uh, Tim Holtz pitch black ink to that and it darkens it a little bit later on in the process it just makes it look a little bit more grunge but I, I kind of just wing it and just go with it a little bit of new copper wire on top isn't a bad thing I think it just adds a little bit of color to it so I'm just applying just some simple black lines to the yellow uh, door frame and that just kind of uh, brings together again the, the the decals that he already has on that frame it's one of those things that you would miss if you noticed it and it would probably bug you forever if it didn't have it. It bugged me, I'll be honest. All right, so at this point, I cannot just let it go and not test fit it. But we jump to a different session here, and this is a session where I have uh, the correct bolt lengths. I have already a, a UV resin the interior of the helmet. You can really see that glossy sheen. I've already uh, resin a little bit of the, the decals there, not, not completely. And I also have the right size bolts here. This is the most important thing here because I was able to put the nuts on the interior and kind of uh, lock it into position with the UV resin. And then we have the actual door itself kind of uh, locked into place and it's really, really coming to life now. All right, so here's the actual topper itself. Now getting this onto this topper was much more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I truly wish I had used slightly longer bolts, but if I had, I feel like that they would have been bent or broken along the way just by use and wear and tear. As you can see here, I'm using just, uh, I intended to use originally two nuts on this, and then I wanted to build a exterior clay uh, washer or adjustable nut that kind of bring, bring it all together. I was not able to do that because even after applying those washers to make the topper move more easily, I only had enough room on the exterior for a small washer and the nut itself. There was no room for anything else. And I also noticed that as I used this through wear and tear, that those nuts slowly uh, loosened out. Now, I believe that 
UV resining the nut but not the shank of the bolt into place on the helmet, helmet exterior will remedy that so it will no longer back out on its own. It'll kind of be locked into place. But this is what it looks like as of right now. Look how great that looks. You can see his eyes through the helmet. It's really starting to come to life. All right, so with that kind of locked in, I went ahead and pulled that off. Now we're gonna go ahead and begin the process of attaching the door. You just gotta remember that the outside uh, plate of the of the welder helmet is not completely finished. Uh, I still gotta get those uh, uh, water slide decals printed off and put on, grunge those out, and then I also gotta finish up painting the the topper and UV resin a little bit more on that. Uh, so I'm not I'm not rushing. I'm not worried about it. It's gonna get done. It's just you got to remember that we're not at our final form quite yet, but we're getting pretty close. It's, it's really starting to take shape now. Uh, every so often, I'll just make sure those little nuts on the, on the hinges are, are still tight. And now we're going to go ahead and get the door into place. So I'm just using just a simple just bolt with washers. Uh, there's going to be two uh, nuts on the interior of each bolt and those will be tightened not to the clay but to each other. Uh, so it takes a little bit of finagling with some, some pliers here. Uh, and by having those two nuts uh, tightened against each other or torqued against each other, uh, then the bolt uh, shank length between the head of the bolt and the first nut leaves space uh, for the uh, for, for the, uh, the washers and the clay and the hinge of the door to move freely without it wor me worrying about it it's tightening automatically or it loosening on its own so that still could possibly happen but it's just less likely uh, a little bit of UV resin did get into the washers that I had sunk into the clay I just did have to be a little bit rough with that it's okay it's not a make it or break it but um, uh, I should not have UV resin those quite yet Right. as my big fingers kind of fit between those pieces of clay there to get those little those little nuts on there it's not as easy as it looks but once they're on there and they're tightened down I never have to tighten these again through the rest of the process so sit back and enjoy this and I'll catch you at the next stage
so at this point we can kind of test fit it it's looking pretty good you can actually use it to move up and down don't lie you guys you know for being clay and resin this is pretty black gum cool i think that i've taken this a little bit farther than i had it originally intended but it is so worth every minute that i spend on it all right so we can go ahead and sink his topper down onto his head now and then we can you can see the light cascading through the glass like i said his hair is blue i said that earlier in the process and i was not a liar his hair is blue <laughs> So as we uh, bring that up and down, you can really get a feel for how it moves. Uh, like I said, this is more so of a trophy piece, something that he keep in his studio. Uh, and then I'm going to make him his own drinkable cup on the side. So I'll also post that maybe in the final video or something, just a little picture of that. But uh, this is more of a trophy. Really looking good, really coming together. See the up and down action is working pretty good. I'm going to adjust there so you can see it a little bit better. Let me bring it down. And open the eye port. It's functional and it stays propped open on its own. That may change with wear and tear. That's okay. And as we move that around, the hinge of the door stays in position. We can adjust it if we need to back and forth I am absolutely ecstatic with how this looks and every minute like I said I spend on it is well worth it it's really starting to come together so at this point we're really just kind of locking down the lot the last few details of the actual helmet itself I had most of the helmet done for at least a week or two and was working on other processes before I could finish, uh, I, I finished printing off the decal. There it is with the light and you can see it kind of just uh, flashes. I don't have a flickering light, I'll probably just put a steady blue one in. If he wants to apply a flickering light to that portion of the build, he can do that later. That is no problem. So you can see the, the glossy sheen there, and how it looks. I still got to finish out the bottom of the topper just to kind of finalize that before we move on to some more stages. So now I'm, I'm really starting to lock in the final details. Uh, so I went ahead and layered up some washers and I kind of shoved those underneath the, the uh, casted aluminum antenna there. Uh, one side required two, one side required one, and I E6000 those into place. And that's the smallest amount of detail ever. It may never even be noticeable, but if it were missing, especially on the right hand side, looking at the helmet, you would notice that because there's a slight gap there. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to include those washers so that it looks like it's all finished out. And I do apply a little bit of a brown wash to that before I uh, uh, UV resin those into final form, into final position. So it's just the small things that I'm trying to lock in now. So once that is in there, I go ahead and I'm always test fitting it, guys. I'm test fitting, test fitting, test fitting, making sure that it's hinging up and down in the right manner. It's holding itself up. I'm hoping that doesn't change with wear and tear uh, before we move on to the wiring. So I actually stripped a piece of electrical wiring here, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap the wires around the interior of the antenna. So the, the very middle antenna needs extra wires around it. 
I don't know if I'm going to put yellow UV resin on these or not. I know that he has them on his helmet. I don't know if I'm going to add those quite yet. I might, I might not. We'll decide. It will be a surprise. So this is a little bit of a process, just twisting it here, making it loose there. Uh, his is kind of uh, uh, not uniform in a lot of ways. Uh, and he kind of lets the, the wire do what it wants to do as he wrapped those around. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm liking that he was able to use a bunch of different mediums there um, and different wire sizes to achieve the look that he was going for. And I'm hoping that I'm able to achieve that as well. So just a reminder, the, uh, the thickness of the, the wiring is different. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and apply a, a, a larger bend across the whole upper portion between the two antennas and the middle uh, cathode. And I also apply that little uh, U uh, staple in the top of the casted aluminum uh, antenna. You can see it's holding that wire because it may move, it may uh, shift a little bit, and that's going to keep that in position. That will be UV resin into place. So if the wire moves, it's okay. It's not going to go anywhere. So now I'm just using a thinner gauge of wire to achieve that. I'm going to post a picture of it in the top right hand corner again for reference. And then there it is. So sit back and enjoy the rest of this process here. How absolute awesome does that look? It is absolutely beyond my wildest expectations of how it turned out. So obviously his bolts are might be a little bit different than mine. His wire that he used might be different than mine, but I just used what I had or what I could find. And I think that the overall gauges are pretty close to one another. I think that the original coils around the, uh, the aluminum uh, uh, antenna there is slightly thicker than what I'm using. And his are a little bit more tightly wound, but still very cool overall. I'm just using a little bit of that pitch black Tim Holtz uh, ink just to apply a little bit of darkness to those coils, uh, just to vary things up a little bit. Just give it some color, some contrast. Uh, it's not giving it full coverage, obviously, because I'm doing this after it's already on the gray uh, paint, but it's just kind of giving it some just some small details. I think this thing is looking absolutely, positively incredible. And then the very last thing that we're going to roll into is the decals. The water slide decals, that is. So there's one at the top. It's a square, not an oval like the ones I showed earlier. And it is uh, just the red lettering danger. I did get a little bit of tearing right there on the edge of the, the red uh, of paper there. And then we're also going to apply the, the hazard one above it, which is slightly smaller. And then we're going to uh, apply some, some grunge paint to that just to give it a little bit of color before we roll into final clear coat. And then this thing is ready for glamour shots. All right, again, I would like to appreciate you all for taking the time to invest in watching my content. I hope you all are really enjoying this series from Mad Might Studio 68. If you haven't had the opportunity, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button and let me know in the comments what you think about this video. It was a doozy, but there's so much information in it for you. Sit back and enjoy these awesome glamour shots of this amazing welder's helmet. I'll catch you guys on the next video.
You can watch me work in my element. Anyone in the way is irrelevant. You wanna cross me, cool, not intelligent. Cause I don't forget shit like an elephant. Go ahead and tempt me. Put it on the line and you'll come up empty. If I got time, I'm deadly. Never cut off guard, no, I'm always ready. I got a hand real.